for private well owners is describe the drinking water standard that's on our website. It's called water quality. I think of something explaining the testing results from a private well owner's perspective. They can actually look up a parameter, see what the unit is and what's an action level, and, and, and take some action. Uh, we, again, most of the wells are impacted by coliform bacteria. And a lot of people think that's, well, it's no big deal. You know, it's just a little bacteria. It's not normally disease causing. It's found in soil everywhere. But if 50% of those wells have that bacteria in it, we all live downstream. We have one well up, well up on the hill, then we have a few downstream, down gradient. That one well that gets impacted travels through the system. Now, just because there's coliform bacteria in there that might have a survival of about 90 days, well, we're well within the survivability of Giardiasis, Cryptosporidium, viruses, and all those things are smaller. So the people that say, when I talk to them, say, well, it's this bacteria. I just could shock disinfect my well. I can just put a UV system on and I solve the problem. Well, yeah, the water you're drinking is maybe okay, but the water that maybe your well is actually the cause of that groundwater problem is not fixed. And I've worked a number of cases where we've gone into places and found private wells that are contaminated, and the reason why they're contaminated is they were never built the right way. They were never built the right way, they were never installed properly, and they were never sited the right way. That's the other part of the Marcellus Shale factor. We are spending so much time saying, hey, for the industry, what's going on? What are your practices? We forget that we've created all these pinpricks that actually if we drill down through the, our, the, the unconsolidated material into rock, gone through and cracked the confining layer, and we left that at leaky. So we've created these spots where contaminants can leak down into the formation. Now those contaminants could be every activity that goes on right now, or it could be a frack truck turned over, brine water, residual waste, diesel being delivered to a site, all those become factors. And one of the things that's happening now is testing private wells has become a punch stamp. Hey, I got that done. I mailed them their report. They have it in their hands. Wait a second, I found 10 wells that are, have significant problems in the area I'm working. Are we gonna do anything about them? No. So let me talk a little bit about groundwater in Pennsylvania from my perspective. About 50% of groundwater is, is drinkable. Yes. I, just something yeah. I moved here about 18 years ago, so sure. I have a well, a private homeowner in this area. Yes. And the water had, it when I first moved here, it had like a no, strong right. odor, like a sulfur right. sure. to it. Yes. So I put a, an in-house okay. filter. Yeah. And it took that out. Right. Well, I noticed that the filters over the years, yeah. sometimes when I change them filters, it's either an orange tent, and then it can be a black tent. Right. But it's different seasons of the year. Yeah, that can be. Now, what happens? What is that? Yeah, it's two things. Sulfur odors in groundwater in this area are caused by two things. It's either a chemical reaction or a biochemical reaction, or the hybrid being both. Uh, so if it's a chemical reaction, all you have to do is put a carbon filter on, and that with that sulfur in the water will attach to the carbon. And it's gone. And it's gone. It's attached to the carbon, no problem. If the actual cause is a bacteria that's native, what will happen is you might put the filter on, it'll take the odor out, but the bacteria is still there. They're either growing in the well, or they start growing in your piping, and the odor returns. When they grow, they can the sulfur bacteria look black. Usually once they become populated, there's another set of bacteria that can start growing, and that could be iron or manganese. And iron and magnesium slime look red. Okay, so what about, like one time, I had trouble with the water heater. Yes, oh, great. And there was probably four inches, it looked like rock. Yeah, sure. But that was the sulfur it, 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 Yes, yeah, it could be a sulfur or iron crust. Yeah, it shorted out the heater because it was yeah, the Yeah, typically there's two things with hot water heaters and sulfur odors. A hot water heater, the sulfur odor could be caused by the anode in the hot water heater. It's a, I think it's manganese. If it's a magnesium anode, it actually has a catalyst that causes the sulfur to be reduced. So you, you can change that out. The other one is the same, those bacteria can start growing in the hot water heater itself. And what you can do is you can actually increase the temperature in the hot water heater to above 140 degrees. These bacteria are, are mesophilic. They like moderate temperatures. Like me, I'm a fat guy on the beach. You know, I mean, I don't like the beach. I, I can't stand it. You know, it's not the place for me. 
And so you fill up, you make the, the hot water hotter, becomes thermophilic, and they die off. And that's how you control them. But one of the things that I kind of do, and I, again, trying to stay in the middle here and not get involved in lawsuits, you know, unless I'm doing the baseline testing for people, but trying to stay in the middle, one of the things I did is I had gone up into the Dimmick area and, and I did some split sampling. And one of the things I found was that a large, at least the number of wells I tested so far, all have hits on iron bacteria. And that's about 50% of private wells are probably meat, drink, and water standard. The other 50% don't. And the one that, the, uh, of those, the rest that don't meet it, most commonly they don't meet it because of total coliform bacteria. The next one is because of iron and manganese. And typically when I have a total coliform bacteria problem and an iron and manganese problem, I have an iron, iron bacteria problem. And those things need to be controlled. And it's very possible that some of the issues they may or may not be having with water treatment systems and the wells in that area are caused because we have that other problem that's not being tested for. Iron bacteria and sulfur bacteria are not routine tests. There's no certification for it. There's only screening tests. So if the, the two colors I told you about, which one represents what? The red would be iron bacteria. The black would be typically sulfur or manganese. One of those two. But if you have an odor, uh, it would be sulfur. If the odor is only in the hot water heater, it could be just the anode. In the tank, one of the other ways to check would be to take the toilet off the toilet tank in the back, and rub your hand along the side, and it feels if it feels slimy, then it's a bacterial issue. If it feels non-slimy, then it's probably a chemical reaction. So, 50% of private wells are contaminated by coliform bacteria, and that's been caused by what? Us, us, us. How we designed, where we put the wells, how we put them in. We did not put sanitary wells in. We went on and drilled a non-perfectly round hole, shoved perfectly round casing in it, and let the hole, uh, the hole around the pipe collapse. That creates a direct conduit into the groundwater aquifer. Anytime surface water or groundwater hits that conduit, it can immediately recharge. Again, these wells are pinpricks into the aquifer. When we find testing that shows these wells are there and they have, they need to be fixed. We're not doing that. The other issues, iron and manganese, are common problems. Lead's also a, more commonly a problem uh, we're finding. I was actually surprised to see this, that probably about 10% of the, the private wells have lead issues, elevated lead coming out of the well. I think that might be related to the actual materials used to construct the well, the piping and the, and the, the well itself. Arsenic, about anywhere from about 5 to 6% have elevated levels of arsenic. Arsenic is a primary drinking water standard. We got 5% of the, of, of the people have that problem. The one surprising one that we found in the data set that we had from Luzerne County was the presence of phthalates. How many people have any idea what a phthalate is? I don't know. <laughs> A-L-A-T. Thank you. By the way, when I went to school, they taught me, uh, they never, I never learned phonics. <laughs> never learned phonics. I, I learned word recognition. Uh, up until ninth grade, I, if you ever ask me to do a book report, or actually 10th grade, I do a book report on Charlie Brown and, and comic books. Uh, so the, the school system in Wilkes-Barre was A number one. I have dyslexia really bad. Uh, it, it's a, a very challenge to write, so the, the, the article I just did for the Times Tribune was three days of effort, and I had two readers, my wife and my one daughter, having to read that because I couldn't find any errors. Um, phthalates are, you know, plastic containers. A while back, they 